As a current user of Crosslink 1040, you're probably aware of many of the outstanding features of our software. Today I want to talk to you about one of these, using Crosslink to create a paperless office. What we'll cover today is what is a paperless office, benefits of a paperless office, how to create a paperless office using Crosslink 1040, and the tools of the document archive, the scanner, and the electronic signature pad. So what is a paperless office? It's a work environment in which the use of paper is greatly reduced or eliminated entirely. This is achieved by configuring documents and other papers into a digital format. Let's talk about the benefits of a paperless office. One is that it saves you time. It saves you time that you would normally use to print, copy, or file papers. It also saves you money. Money that you would normally spend on paper, ink or toner, folders, even filing cabinets. And it provides a peace of mind. When it comes time for audits, everything is compliant. Everything is time and date stamped and organized within each return. There are certain tools that you will use to create a paperless office, such as the electronic signature pad, the 2D barcode scanner, and our integrated document archive within our software. A lot of times people ask, does it matter which brand I buy? Well, there are certain brands and models that are compatible with our software, and you can find those listed on our website. I'll show you where you can find that. If you log on to www.crosslinktax.com and look at the top choices, under Features, you can find Electronic Signature Pads. And scrolling down, you will see the models that work with our software. Also under Features, if you go to Scan and Store, and scroll down. It shows you the model of the handheld scanner that is compatible with our software. And then the last thing mentioned here is the document archive. With our document archive within our software, you can import and store any electronic file to the document archive up to one megabyte. This would include things such as Excel spreadsheets, Word documents, PDF images, picture files, and files created using a traditional flatbed scanner or copier. There are probably many, many different things that would be beneficial for you to store in your document archive. These things, again, are stored with the return for easy access and are also time and date stamped. You could use this for things such as medical expenses, mileage logs, receipts, bank statements, dividends, Schedule C, W-2s, 1099s, different forms of identification, identity protection PIN numbers, or voided checks for direct deposit. And this is just a few of the things that you can use and save these things in your document archive. So let me show you how you would start to create a paperless office in our software. From the work in progress summary, you would want to go up to Setup on the menu bar and go to printer setup. On the second tab that reads 1040 return printing, you can select what is saved within a return, either to be printed or in this case to be saved to the document archive. At the very bottom of this window, you would want to deselect the boxes besides send to printer to save on the paper and the ink. And instead, make sure the checkboxes are checked beside Send to Archive and click on OK. One way that you can use the handheld scanner is to start a return by scanning a scan bar on a W-2. Not all W-2s have this scan bar at this time, approximately 20 to 30% do, but we anticipate many more having this barcode. 
If you have a W-2 that has the barcode on it, you can go up to Add New in our program. And where you would normally type in the Social Security number and confirm it, you would scan the bar, which I'm going to do now with my handheld scanner. So you can see that it completes the Social Security number from the W-2. When you click on OK, it will open up our client data screen. And it also fills in information on that screen from the W-2. But that's not all. If you go over to the side under Attached Forms and go down to the W-2 and double click on that to open it, then you see that the entire W-2 is completed. So this saves time from typing and also guards against any errors in typing when you're entering this information in from the W-2. That is one way that you can use the handheld scanner. There are several other things that you can do with this. I double clicked on Document Archive under Attach Forms and it opens up this window. You see the choice at the bottom that says Scan Document. If I click on this, it allows me to choose what I'm scanning, to type in an additional message if I wish, And then I'm going to use a handheld scanner to, in this case, scan a social security card as a form of identification. I simply position the scanner over what I want to scan and click on Snap. And there you see a picture of the ID. You also have the choice to crop or rotate if you wish. I think this is a pretty good capture. It's clear, it's centered, I can read it. So I'm going to click on Save. Now we see in our document archive something has appeared. It's what we've just scanned. It says identification for this person. I can double click on it to open it up and view this image again and also print it if I need to. Let's say you want to import something that maybe you scanned in earlier from a flatbed scanner or a file that you have saved somewhere on your computer. To do so, you can click on the next button, the Import Document button. Then it allows you to find what you want to import. This opens up everything on my computer as if I was attaching a file. And I'm going to go to my desktop. It's loaded my file. I can type an additional description. Click on OK. And that is now also filed in my document archive. All of this stays in here. As a matter of fact, things cannot be deleted for security purposes. And everything is also date and time stamped for compliance. There's another button down here that says attach document. This is used whenever you want to attach something that's going to be sent with the return to the IRS. To use that you click on the button and click on the new button. Then you decide whether it's a federal or a state form. It has listed the forms that are available. You can type in additional information here. Click OK. And then that will be transmitted with the return to the IRS. That is talking about using the handheld scanner in our document archive. We also want to talk about using the signature pad. To do this, I'm going to go into a return that has already been completed. So it's ready to print and be signed. So I'm in Charles Smith's test return right now. Using the signature pad saves time. It is estimated to save seven to eight minutes per return. So that can definitely add up throughout your day and throughout your season. I'm going to go up to the print button. and go to the Sign Doc button. 
This will allow a taxpayer to sign the return electronically using our signature pad. So I have a signature pad here. I'm going to sign for this return. Click on Accept. It also allows you to have the ERO sign. And then I'm going to scroll down to show you how these signatures will appear automatically every time a signature is required. There's no need to copy and paste or drag and drop or even to point out to a, a taxpayer where they need to sign. So we have a taxpayer signature. I'm scrolling down. We see that signature again. And any time it's required within that return. So this is done whenever a tax return is finished and it's time for the taxpayer to sign it. We have a new feature this year that's called a remote signature. And this allows you, if you have a taxpayer whose return is completed, but they're not in the office, or maybe one of the taxpayers is not in the office if it's um, someone filing jointly, and a text, a secure text, can be sent to the person who is out of the office. They can review it, sign it on their smartphone, and then send it back. And then that way, their electronic signature will be entered just the same as it is right here using the um, electronic signature pad that you might have in your office. So this can save a lot of time and um, make it very convenient for your taxpayers to sign so that they're getting their money faster and you're getting your money faster. Besides having the taxpayer sign, you can also set up ahead of the season to have your ERO and all of your pay for pairs signed. So again, their signatures would show up automatically everywhere where their signature was required. To do that, you go up to our database, first going to EF Originators. This test return already has some listed here, so I'm going to open up one that was created. And you see that the signature is right here. That was done for the entire season. Anytime you want to delete a signature and capture it again, you're also able to do that. It works the same way if you go up to Database, to Paid Preparers. I have one preparer listed here. When I get in there, she has already signed here. But again, you can delete a signature and you can recapture it if you wish. Now when you're in a return and you go up to the print button, there are some other choices in this print dialog box as well. We talked about Find Doc. If you use the filter or the PDF button, this allows you to choose certain pages. The filter allows you to choose certain documents and PDF allows you to choose certain pages if you would need to print for any reason without having to print the entire return and everything that's associated with it. That's what would happen if you would click on the print button. You can also preview what you're printing here. If you have a valid email address in the client data form, then you can also use this email button and that will allow you to email a copy of the return to a taxpayer. This can save a lot of time and money as you're not printing out anything and you're not mailing anything. If a customer is using a bank product, you know you have to have a se separate signature for that. And you can do that by going up to print and going to bank document and then again using the sign doc button for them to sign the bank document. So everything can be done paperless. So just comparing a little bit about what you might be doing now in a traditional office and what's possible to be done in a paperless office. Looking at the first one, cost. 
in your traditional office, you are paying for paper, tone, or ink, um, possibly paying to dispose your extra papers or recycling. You have storage costs, the manila folders, the filing cabinets. The paperless office, you have the initial investment of purchasing a signature pad and or a handheld scanner. That's it. In a traditional office, you're spending time, time printing, time maybe going away from your desk to pick up things that have been printed, printing and marking the signature field, and then showing your taxpayers everywhere they need to sign, um, organizing and storing everything. In a paperless office, you might not even have to leave your desk. And remember, all the signature fields are auto-populated. And all of your electric documents are organized and stored automatically with the return. You don't ever have to worry about losing anything or not being able to find supporting documents if you're audited. In a traditional office, you have space taken up by printers and copiers and filing cabinets. In a paperless office, the few tools you need can sit right on your desk. Also, sharing information. In a traditional office, you would have to copy things or email things to coworkers or other people that would need the information. In a paperless office, everyone can access it directly from the software. And again, you can always email returns to your customers at no cost. You have a security issue in a traditional office if everything's not locked up all the time. Our electronic documents are encrypted and stored in password protected program and in your computer. Being compliant, you know how many years you have to save everything and the space that that takes, possibly even a fire hazard. With a paperless office, you don't have to worry about that. The pro all of the documents are stored in your program forever and the signatures stay, they don't go away. And that has a great impact on the environment too without having anything to dispose of or to use um, such as the ink and the paper. So today we talked about what a paperless office is, some of the benefits of a paperless office, how to create a paperless office using Crosslink Pen40 and the document archive along with a scanner and signature pad.